right, so Mubarak is out. So who is next? That is the big question tonight after this morning's bombshell resignation. The president's departure after 30 years in office has kicked the power vacuum in Cairo into high gear. And now there is a growing consensus that a radical extremist group known as the Muslim Brotherhood could be in position to take control of the Egyptian government. So what exactly does that mean for America, Israel, and the world? Well, all you have to do is look at the hate-filled words of the leader of that group, Mohammed Badiai. Now, this is a man who fully supports both Sharia law and jihad, and he's also called for the destruction of Israel and Zionism worldwide. In recent days, the White House seems indifferent towards the Muslim Brotherhood. That has been nothing short of reckless. Now, we saw this on Sunday when President Obama refused to condemn the anti-American, anti-Israel group during an interview with Bill O'Reilly. And now possible 2012 contender, former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty, is sending the president a message. When the United States of America projects its national security interests here and around the world, we need to do it with strength. We need to make sure there is no equivocation, no uncertainty. This current administration doesn't seem to understand this important principle. We undermine Israel, the UK, Poland, Czech Republic, Colombia, amongst other of our friends, Meanwhile, we appease and accommodate Iran, Russia, adversaries in the Middle East, including Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. And joining me now with analysis of this potential threat to the United States and Israel is the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, New York Congressman Pete King, and from D.C., Egyptian-American filmmaker, journalist Jehan Harney is back with us. Uh, Hi, well, we hear the, the words of the leader. Their motto is our Allah, our objective, the prophet, our leader, the Quran, our law, jihad, our way, dying in the way of Allah is our highest hope. Uh, Doug Schoen has a piece. He thinks it's over 50 percent a chance the Brotherhood wins power here. Yeah, there's a real chance. I don't think the Muslim Brotherhood has that much support in Egypt. When you have a time like this where there's a revolution, where there has not been a democracy in the country, a well-organized power group can uh, get power far beyond its, uh, its real support. And that's my concern. And what bothers me about the Obama administration is if sometime in the future there may be some small role for the Muslim Brotherhood, that's bad enough. But to be saying up front the way Clapper did yesterday and the way the president refuses to condemn the Muslim Brotherhood, we are giving them an advantage right at the start at the time when there is so much chaos in the country. So I'm very concerned, yep. and I just hope the military uh, has the power it needs and that we work with them to do all we can to make sure the Muslim brother does not, does not take over in Egypt. That would be a disaster for Israel, disaster for the United States, and the entire region. All right. Uh, let me ask you, Jihan. I just read to you their motto. You just heard the words of their leader. My question to you is, I asked you once if Hamas is a terrorist organization. You refuse to say they're a terrorist organization. Is the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization? They are banned in Egypt, though they have a political representation. I didn't ask you if they're banned. I know they're banned in Egypt. Before we get onto your analysis, is the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization? It's a yes or no question. They haven't committed violence in decades, Sean. Excuse me. In fact, they they are denounced by Al Qaeda, Sean, because they don't want to advocate any violence. Okay. They have their own views that we could disagree with, but it doesn't mean that. I would endorse a group like that. Okay. Uh, but I, I, at the same time, they're not even on the terrorist uh, uh, group watch list of the State Department. Jihad is our way. Dying in the name of Allah is our highest hope. Doesn't that sound like terrorism uh, to you, like radical Islamic extremism? Interestingly, why don't you ask why al-Qaeda has denounced them if they don't want to commit any violence? Right. Uh, you know, I just want to, to, to jump, fact, fact, just want to jump to, here to a very important point. Congressman King. Hang on. We are, ahead, Congressman. We are, um, no, the fact is the Muslim Brotherhood, they talk violence. On the one hand, they say they're not violent. Then they have uh, the leader you mentioned. They have Qaddawi, who's their spiritual advisor, who says good things about Hitler, who denounces the Jews, won't even talk to Jews, denounces the United States. We as Americans cannot take this risk of allowing a group that fraternizes with uh, terrorists, who talks in terrorist terms, who talks radically, to have them get any uh, position of power in the Middle I agree with you. East. We shouldn't. But we, we, uh, we shouldn't endorse them, but at the game, we, again, again, we can't suppress them. We can't interfere no, yeah, no, in, no, in the process. We, have, we, have we should allow no, the movement, no. the revolution. What I, happened in Egypt as is Americans, a huge we have a revolution. Strategic interest in, 
As Americans, we have a real strategic interest in the Middle East. We cannot just sit benignly back and say that the Muslim brother can work itself in. No, we it's have not six that we're going to benignly military. back. No, please don't interrupt. Let uh, him finish his thought. Go ahead. We have, okay. we have six months to work with the military in Egypt. Use our influence, mm-hmm. considerable influence we have. Use it right and do all we can to ensure the Muslim brother does not insinuate itself into this situation. Right, so let, me, let me give you a recent poll. This was in Doug Schoen's column today, Jahan, uh, mm-hmm. where he cites, for example, a number of polls, the Pew polls, Ogby polls, and some other polls. One in particular caught my attention, that Egyptians support Sharia law. For example, 84% say that apostates, or those who forsake Islam, should face the death penalty. 77% say thieves should have their hands cut off. A majority, 54%, say men and women should be segregated in the workplace. So that's the views of the people of Egypt. Why are you so hopeful that this no, so-called let me, democracy let me tell you, because I'm in touch emerge. with people from Egypt. I don't know how they conduct their, uh, uh, you know, their polls, but let me tell you what I hear from people in Egypt, people who have actually camped out in Tahrir Square. These people are, you know, my family members, relatives, friends, many, many people that I've been in touch with, talking with, and they have seen uh, members of the Muslim Brotherhood there, and they have said they are, they, they have said they are not as they are perceived to be by the Excuse West, me, wait, because wait, wait, that's, wait. The, that's the, the narrative this, the of Muslim Mubarak Brotherhood. regime and other in the, mother, in, Let me finish, in, the, just a second. Second, in the middle of all this, the Muslim Brotherhood said, prepare for war with Israel. But didn't they also say that they're going to honor Egypt treaties with the, with the, in the past, no, including with Israel? Well, that would obviously no, they did, that would that. negate that, wouldn't that? If they're calling no, the they leadership called for prepare, told people to prepare for war with Israel. Now, Congressman King, right. that to me is a very clear statement of where they would intend to take any government. It seems that the Obama administration, by saying they're going to reconsider their relationship, has already acquiesced to the fact that this is going to be high. Hang on, on, Congressman. And we cannot take that risk. We saw this in Iran in 1979. I agree. Most of those demonstrators are probably good people, just like in Iran. The the revolution in 1978 and 79 was led by Mm -hmm. good people. Then Khomeini took it over. And that's what I see happening in the Muslim Brotherhood coming in, hijacking this revolution, and then it's too late. And that's why the Obama administration has to be aggressive up front. What what do they need to do? Mr. King, they can't hijack the revolution because they are weak and because Egyptians don't the only Mr. organized King. political party in Egypt is the Muslim I don't know where you get your analysis from, Mr. King, but the Egyptians don't want power. Sharia right. imposed well, on them in Egypt. Let me, hang on, let me make one point. And what's really frightening is if you go back to 1979 mm-hmm. and the Iranian Revolution, what we found is, you know, there were people in, in uh, the media... Right. In the New York Times, for example, saying this is great. People in the Carter government suggesting that right. Gandhi, when the Ayatollah was coming out of he was exile, right. that he was Gandhi. Right. And we also saw it in Castro in 1959, the so-called democratic revolution. Castro said all the right things. Once he got in power, he allied himself to the Soviets. The same thing happened with Khomeini when he took over in 79. I'm afraid it's going to happen here with the Muslim Brotherhood. The president cannot can stand I, back I, and say he's going to let the Vince take right. the court. We have a role to play. They're, they're not like going to get Truman power was because the Egyptians don't want them to itself. get that power. Let, let, let me give me give me just one minute uninterrupted just to tell you seconds. the Go. views from Egyptians on the Muslim Brotherhood. OK, in 2005, they came to power uh, because the Egyptian government was pushed by the Bush administration to open the door for people to run for elections. Uh, and make- All right, guys, I, I, I got to cut you short because we're way out of time. I'm looking at the clock here. I apologize, but we got to take a break. We'll come back. Let not your heart be troubled. Oh, great, great, great. American panel is next.